Hi there, this is David, and I have some news for you. This article might be a little bit old hat, released on July 24th of this year, but basically this is Square saying that they will release Final Fantasy Pixel remasters on home consoles if there is demand. This article was released back like whenever these Pixel remasters were first announced, and when they were first announced to come to PC only. And then everybody was like, what? What's going on? So let's actually look and see if there is demand for these games on home consoles. As we're going through this article right here, um, basically the quote from the interviewer says, and this is done by Google Translate, um, the, the interviewer says, Currently, 1 through 6 are available on Steam and smartphones, and they have been for, on sale for more than 10 years. Maintenance is difficult. It's amazing how far smartphones have come. So, we want to remaster the game on the same smartphone and on Steam so that people all over the world can play it for many years to come. If there's a lot of demand for it, we'll do our best to make it playable in more environments. Please support me! Yeah. Okay. So, this is kind of the thing. This is what really gets me. This is what really just goads me and just makes me kind of angry. I remember back whenever I was a kid, whenever you would buy a game for many, many, many game companies, but I know for a fact that Square did it, you would get one of those business reply surveys, like a little postcard, and it would have various games, and it would say, you know, check boxes of all the games that you own, and then you would check them, and then it would say, you know, which games are you looking forward to, and it had check boxes for those, and it would say, you know, any kind of comments that you would have, and you'd write it down, you would fill it out, and throw it in the mail, no posters necessary. And that is how companies got their feedback. They got their feedback directly through the consumers by, by uh, putting out surveys that didn't cost you a dime. They came with the games already. Now, we're here in a digital age, and it's even easier for these companies to make surveys like that. If you go and you buy, say, Final Fantasy 1, Pixel Remastered, it could come with a little survey where they could send you an email and say, Hey, do you would you like to see this on a console? Would you like to see this on Switch? And then you could send that back to them, and it would be automatically tabulated. But do they do that? No, they don't do that. What they do instead is say, Hey, we want to see the demand, which translates into, Hey, we want your money, which translates into, Hey, if you buy it here on Steam for the first time for $10, you're going to have to buy it again on console whenever we put it there for, you know, maybe $30. Or if we bundle it together and then it's $60 for all six games. They're no longer asking you for your opinion like they used to. What they are doing is trying to get every little last dime out of you. And that is what really angers me about this article and about Square's uh, tactics. So, let's have a little gander, shall we, at Steam Spy. This is a website that basically tells you, it, it, it gives you an average of how well games have sold on Steam. So let's look at Pixel Remastered Final Fantasy 1 right here. It says that the amount of owners are between 100,000 and 200,000. For Final Fantasy 2, between 50,000 and 100,000. Final Fantasy 3, 50,000 and 100,000. And so on, 50,000 to 100,000 for Final Fantasy 4. And Final Fantasy 5, 20,000 to 50,000. That tells me, yeah, there's a lot of demand for it. That tells me that there's roughly anywhere between about 250,000 owners of these games up to 550,000 owners of these games. So, is there a demand for these on consoles? Yeah! More than likely, yeah! People like physical releases still. I am one of those people that likes physical releases. But you know what Square likes? They like to screw over their fan base and sell this piecemeal, piece by piece by piece, and it's not good enough to them to sell it piecemeal. Then, they want to sell it again on console if there's demand for it they just want to wait they just want to wait and you know what square does this pretty often they do this pretty often whenever there is like a um, a sequel announced or something 
and they'll be like, oh, yeah, you know, we might make a sequel to this game. If there's demand for it, that means buy the first one, you know? Uh, sometimes they'll remaster a game that they just made. Oh, you know, we'll, we'll do that again if there's demand for it, so rebuy that. You gotta double dip. You gotta keep on going. Now, let's talk about double dipping. I mentioned this, and I am guilty of this. This is a crappy tactic used to suck the consumers dry. But, hey, it works. But you know which company has actually perfected double dipping? You get one guess. Square. Square Enix has really perfected the art of the double dip. So, let's talk about exactly what that is. I bought Chrono Trigger back on the SNES, and I loved it. I bought Final Fantasy II back on the NES, or the SNES, I'm sorry, and I loved it. But guess what I also bought? Final Fantasy Chronicles, which is a compilation of Final Fantasy IV and Chrono Trigger. And I bought this on the PlayStation 1. I double dipped. I went and I got this because I was a huge fan. And Square must have learned and said, hey, why are we giving out surveys? We can just check and see. Is there demand? And they do this constantly. They constantly do this. Um, if you look at the the Dragon Quest games on the DS, these were yet another double dip, especially for the Japanese audience, who you know already had Dragon Quest V, already had Dragon Quest VI. They already had these games, but you know what? They had to re-release them, and they had to make them double dip. Now, these ones I'm not too upset about because they are enhanced ports, and they do have more stuff. Um, same thing with this. Like, they have perfected this art of the double dip. They really have. The Pixar remasters, though, don't have any added extra content. They don't... It's, it's, it's not like the Zodiac Age versus the regular Final Fantasy XII. There is no added content to these Pixar remasters. There's actually lost content to these Pixar remasters. So, for them to really be doing this... It, it, it just shows they're like a blood-sucking vampire trying to take every last drop of blood from the stone that they possibly can. And you know what's going to happen? I'm, I'm going to make a prediction right now. Here's what's going to happen. Come January, maybe early February, Final Fantasy VI Pixel Remastered is going to come out. Then we're going to wait maybe two more months come March, because it's been a two-month cycle between these Pixel Remasters. Come about March... I think Square is going to say, Oh, guess what? There's so much demand for a console release. Let's go ahead and bundle that together, and we're going to release it this summer. So they're going to wait. They're going to wait that nice two months between each time to get as many people to buy in, to buy into these Pixel Remasters, to not give any kind of news on it. They're going to release Final Fantasy VI. No news. We don't know. We still need to see if there's demand. Oh look, two months have gone up, people have quit buying it. Yeah, there's demand. There it is, let's bundle these together. Let's release this over on Switch. We can release this over on the other consoles too. We just gotta make sure that we get every single last dime out of our consumers. We're not gonna send you a survey. We're not gonna actually ask you if you want a console release. God forbid we ask you. We're just going to let you vote with your dollars, which means just give as many dollars as you possibly can over to Square, and then they're going to do it again, and again, and again, and again. And it's just such a shitty, shitty marketing tactic that they are using, and I am just really upset about it. I saw this article, I remember reading it when it first came out, and I was like, oh, okay, well if there's demand, you know, we'll, we'll buy the first one. But now I see exactly what they're doing, and this is... This is a cycle. This is a pattern. They've been doing this for quite a bit of time, and I'm just pointing it out to y'all so that you are aware of this. I mean, I personally do hope that they come to console, and uh, if they do, I'm guilty of the double dip. I'll probably buy it, and I am the reason why Square is doing these things, but what I'm saying is, if you want to know if we're demanding it, send out a survey like y'all used to do. Because every single message board I've seen, every single Facebook article that I've seen, everything that I've seen, every, every single comment says, Yeah, we want this on a console. This is no big mystery here. This is not a mystery. People want this on a console, Square. Get it together. 
Sorry for my rant today, but I just had to get this off my chest. Let me know how you guys feel about this in the comments. Do you want Pixel Remastered on a console? How do you feel about Square's tactics in regard to this? Because I, for one, am not a fan. This has been David. If you guys like this, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a good day.